Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the odd man. He'll unpack wisdom and insights from a cross-section of top quality performers in business, media, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle to uncover key elements to help you live your best audacious life ever. So without further ado, here is The Odd Man. Greetings and salutations. What's happening, everybody? I'm Audley Stevenson, and welcome to the most audacious podcast on the web. Uh, this is the Audacious Living Podcast, and I'm appreciative always that you've taken time out of your day and have chosen to spend it here with us as we continue our ongoing goal of helping you live your best audacious life ever. Uh, of As always, you can connect with us through our, our social media channels. We are on Twitter and Instagram under the handle The Audacious pod and then on facebook it's the audacious living podcast and as well youtube you can subscribe to our youtube channel uh, and get updates each and every single time we got new video content comes out so uh, i'd encourage you like follow subscribe share tell a friend uh let the world know uh, about the audacious living podcast so thank you um you know, we, we talk a lot on this podcast about living your, your best audacious life. And one surefire way uh, to do that would be start by working on your bucket list. Uh, it's that list of things that you want to achieve, those accomplishments, uh, those maybe trips, travel, go to those special places, all the things that you want to do uh, before you die. Um, for me, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to skydive one of these days and it's going to happen, right? So I, that's on my bucket list. And we all have different lists. We all have different goals or aspirations. And so uh, why not pursue that list? But he, here's the thing. It's not enough just to make a list of things you want to do. You actually have to go out and put in the work and, and do it. And, and this is where a lot of people get stuck. You know, what oftentimes happens is that our, our bucket list gets mixed up uh, with, you know, the, t- the daily to-do list. And we never actually get to do the things that we really want to do because we're caught up doing the things that we have to do. You know, Trav Bell, the bucket list guy, he understands this very, very well. Uh, and uh, he works with people to help them get over that hump. So you're not just actually making a list, you're actually accomplishing the things that you put down on paper. Um, you know, you know, one of the hashtag that he uses is ticket before you kick it. <laughs> I like that one. Um, you know, c- creating a bucket list is a form of, of goal setting, and it's a great way to keep ourselves accountable and be accountable to ourselves. Uh, th- there are so many positive things that come out of going through that bucket list creation exercise. Uh, it helps you identify the things that are important to you. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to visualize y- your dreams and go after them. And then it also helps you to develop your ability to focus. And, and, and my favorite one, hands down, it provides you with the opportunity to inject more fun in your life. Uh, you know, in, in addition to being a speaker and author, Trav is a self-appointed bucketologist. Never heard of that term before uh, until we chatted with Trav. So he'll talk all about that. Uh, his book is My My Bucket List Blueprint, and it helps readers understand uh, not only just the process for creating their own bucket list, but it also shows them how they can bring more joy in their lives at the same time. Trav will get into all this and so much more. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Trav Bell, AKA the bucket guy, the bucket list guy. Enjoy. Author, speaker, and self-appointed bucket listologist, Trav Bell joins the podcast to share his thoughts on why all of us should have our very own bucket list and the steps needed to turn our dreams into reality. His book, My Bucket List Blueprint, is a great tool to help readers live their life on purpose with meaning and fulfillment. Trav Bell is up next on the Audacious Living Podcast. But, but Trav, let, let, let's, let's get into this because, you know, you are the bucket list guy. Right, um, a, yeah. a, title, a title like that probably raises a lot of <clears throat> eyebrows with people. Um, you want to just explain sort of where that came from and, and, and how you landed on that, you know, in this direction, if you will? Yeah, for sure. Like I, 
Um, I've been the bucket list guy for about 10 years now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Prior to, prior to that, I was in the personal fitness training industry. I was the first to franchise personal fitness training studios in Australia, okay. starting with one client, tens of thousands of clients later, over 2 million personal training sessions later. I nice. uh, did that for 20 years. I went down a bit of a, uh, you know, had, had all these gyms around Australia, helping heaps of people. Um, and that was pretty much my identity. Um, but there was some, I guess, toxicity in my life. People, situations went into a bit of a downward spiral, uh, went through about a depression, um, breakdown before breakthrough kind of moment, right? And uh, albeit my depression was somewhat mild compared to what I've heard since. Um, but instead of going on heavy antidepressants, which is kind of like a Band-Aid effect, right? Um, I, I went, you know what, I'm going to, I want to get to the, to the root cause of what's going on with my psychology, always fascinated with psychology. So being my own guinea pig, I, I ventured out and did a whole heap of you know, seminars and events and, you know, and had to force myself to do it too. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, the last, that's the last thing you want to do when you're in that sort of state, but I just didn't want to go on drugs. Sure. <clears throat> so, um, I, I found myself in all these different seminars, you know, going to nearly every weekend for about a year and a half, you know, hugging it out and high-fiving it with strangers, walking on fire, breaking the boards, bending the bars and the arrows and awesome. all that sort of stuff that you do. Yeah. And, um, and it wasn't until a friend of mine actually said, hey, why don't, why don't you teach this? <laughs> why don't you teach it? Now, I was like, that helped me compartmentalize what I was actually, what I was there to do and why I was learning. And yeah, i worked through a lot of my own stuff in the process too, right. which really did help. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we always, we, well, a lot of coaches and, and I dare say speakers and podcast hosts, maybe, you know, we all end up doing, you know, paying these lessons forward to help our former self. Mm-hmm. So for me, um, I did, I put on a seminar um, and it was a public seminar. I nearly had to pay the 40 people to come to that seminar. I packaged in all my entrepreneurial stuff, all my the stuff yep. that I'd just been learning. And it was, I was so scared and it was, and it was compared to what I do now. <laughs> and, but you got to start somewhere. And first time always is, hours, the first time always is. Oh, oh my God. And about halfway through, I started sharing my list to do before I die. Now this is only 10 years ago, right? Yeah. But I'd had a list to do before I die since I was 18. Mm. I'm 47 now. And uh, so a lot of people didn't know this about me, that I had one of these lists to do before you die, actually written down. And so I started sharing, you know, my, my list to do before I die. And, you know, it helped me make decisions quickly, you know, grow my business quickly, yep. um, helped me get out of bed in the morning. You know, it was always what I recalibrated on. And I said who else has got one of these actually you know lists written down and i was like no nah. i was the only freak in the room i said well why, do you, why the hell do you want to grow your business get out of bed in the morning why do you want to earn the money and the time you know and people are like oh, i'll pay off the house put the kids through school do a bit of travel when i'm older i'm like yeah i'm probably sicker so at the end of the day i um i got to the end and then joe one of our personal training uh, clients back then said have you, uh, it has all this list to do before you die stuff. It's really fired everyone up. It's like a bucket list. You're like the bucket list guy. I went, ping, light bulb moment. Went home and registered the bucket list And I've been doing that ever since. <laughs> and I sold, I sold out of my businesses. I rebranded, <laughs> you know, defranchised the whole thing. And yeah. then went into the online space to do what I do now. Um, primarily as a speaker, because I, I, I'm a, I'm a coach, I guess, or an educator, a teacher, I guess, right. by trade. And right. I love helping people. It's one of my highest values. And if I if I don't feel like I'm helping people, and through speaking, you're kind of, sort of coaching one to many, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so for me, I, I knew that I wanted to do that and travel the world doing it because I hadn't traveled a lot since uh, or before that because of my business decisions. And uh, so this, this was the lens. This was kind of the filter for me to one be myself, um, be be free, you know, run around the world doing my bucket list and and uh, coaching one to many. So I've been doing that ever since. 
you, you know, you, you, when you were talking about the whole, you know, when you were talking about people, people not having lists and what they get out of bed, uh, you know, <clears throat> really what we're talking about here is purpose, Trav. Like, I mean, you know, in, in the importance of having purpose and having that reason to spring and jump out of bed. You want to sort of talk about yeah. that? I think that's a starting point for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, you got to have the, you know, like what I, what I, you know, the I studied a lot of positive psychology, a lot of NLP, life coaching, yep. Akagi principle. You be aware of the law of attraction, all of this stuff. But mostly, what what the stuff that I've been teaching, which which I call bucket listology, that's not a real, and I call myself a bucket listologist. That's actually not a real science. It's not a real qualification. Don't even go and Google it. But I might. I might do that one day. But anyway, the point being that most of what I teach is positive psychology. I've done a lot of study around positive psychology. And positive psych is performance-based psychology rather than regressive psychology. Okay. In traditional psychology, it's all about helping people, you know, go through their past and bring them and, and deal with their past issues to get them to be normal again. But for a normal person that wants to, you know, move forward, move up, be better, perform better, positive psychology really fits the bill there. So it's about helping people experience more meaning, more purpose and more fulfillment and more gratitude, more mindfulness even, um, to have a happier, more fulfilling life. That's what it's all about. And these are the pillars of positive psychology. It's going towards their strengths, not trying to fix up their weaknesses. Yep. And so I have I guess I teach positive psychology, but with this this bucket, you know, bucket list brand over the yeah. top of it to make it more palatable, more sure. tangible, okay. more commercial. And um, and so at the end of the day, this is, you know, this is essentially what we teach is it's not just about ticking a whole bunch, bunch of cool stuff off. It's really about how a person reverse engineers every aspect of their life in order to make this stuff come to fruition. It's the growth of them on this on this journey towards these self-imposed destinations. Right. But more importantly, and you, 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 you're all over this too, man, is that more importantly, it's about the person that exists on the other side. And that is the person that we do not know yet. You know, that's called our potential. When we experience more of our own potential, um, it puts a smile on our face, you know, and that's what it's all about, you know, helping people grow and, and, you know, Audley, right now, you know that people people are are dying at forty and being buried at eighty, mm. right? And, and and they're they're existing, not living. Right. They're living by default, not by design. There are uh, the 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 rates of depression are going through the roof. The ranks rates of uh, rates of anxiety are going through the roof. The rates of uh, you know the over prescription of antidepressants. 89% of people in the States, in the US, are what they call disengaged at work. In Australia and Canada, it's about 70%. There's 70% of people who go to work every day and are not into what they're doing. They just get the paycheck, come home. That's not a life, mate. You know, that's, that's not purpose. That's not, what the hell? You're sacrificing your happiness to enjoy later. You know, we, we've been sold this delayed gratification myth. Right. I want people to be happier now. We've even got this thing now, you know, don't even mention suicides, sure. youth suicides. Yeah. But we've even got this thing now man, called the loneliness epidemic, which is a real thing. Google it. It's the adverse effect of social media. Mm -hmm. We all think we're more, more connected, but we're actually more disconnected than right. ever before. It's having a massive effect on our, on our psychology, uh, on our mental health. You go throw COVID in on top of all this shit, yeah. Boom. It's a perfect storm, mate. And and so this is my way of hopefully changing some of these statistics, giving people sure. real tools to be able to self-manage, not just for them, but for their families, and maybe change the narrative so they can lead more purposeful, happier lives now rather than yeah. you know later on. You know, so that's why that's why I've done the book and the TED talk and everything that I've yep. done for the last ten years is just digging, you know, dig in and it, it's uh, it's it's born, so, you know, it's it's got some results which I'm pretty stoked about. Well, it's it's, it's amazing stuff, Trav, and I'll tell you what what, <clears throat> what it, it forces people to do, and I think what well, oftentimes people forget about 
is, is, is that journey, right? So enjoy the time that you have now step-by-step step as you go, as opposed to mm. delaying your happiness as you talked about, right? It's, it's, it's ha- like yeah. right now, the power of now. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, like it's all well and good for us to talk about this, but we're so busy on our daily to-do list that we forget about our bucket list until something traumatic or dramatic happens to us or a loved one. Right. Right. And then they're like, when they're staring down the barrel of a use by date, then people are like, oh, better get together and reprioritize. Dude, you got cancer. Bit late. Right. So my whole thing is to wake people up before they get given a use by date, right? And, and you know, and, and but we're pain motivated. That's the thing about being a human being. We're pain motivated rather than pleasure seeking motivated. Right? We need to have that little breakdown before breakthrough. I just want to wake people up, be, you know, before they have some sort of traumatic event. Maybe, you know, and this is like total icing on the cake for for, for someone like yourself or, you know, for, for other people that have got their shit together. Um, but it might be the massive aha moment for some people to go, you know what, this is perfect, you know, perfect place, perfect time. It's time to separate our daily to-do list from our bucket list and put some priority on that, you know. And, uh, uh, and you know, bucket list is just a theme of, you know, really my way of saying the same stuff as what you've you've been saying. It's it's the same sort of thing, but but like s- stop, you know, like stop kidding yourself. Stop waiting for the perfect time or some day to come around that ain't a day of the week, dickhead. Like get on with it. Get on with it. Absolutely. Yeah. So so you talk let's let's talk about some of these tools, like how you help people. So you know, <clears throat> Joe Schmo walks in the door and says, Trav, I, I, I need help. Where, where, where do you start with someone like that? Can't help you. I can't help you. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you can only help yourself. Gotcha. All right. Which is obviously, uh, but if a person actually admits that there is a gap between where they are now and where they want to be, and they do seek a mentor, a coach, or a a, a resource. Hang on. Yep. There we go. A, a resource such as the book, or they they go to an event, or they go to it. You know. Ask even ask a friend. It means there there's some admittance in in that. Gotcha. You know, they they say in psychology that <clears throat> uh, you can't have a person that doesn't want to be helped. You know, and and that's the problem with the personal development industry, right? We go to seminars and we read the books and we look at you should you need to you must you have to you know like if you want to change your life, I recommend you do this. You don't know you don't know what's going on. With it. Piss off, you know. So a person has to come to their own um, their own decisions. So if they do raise the white flag, metaphorically speaking, and they say, yes, I do want help, it's like, all right, cool, let's go. You know, for the, uh, for the per, you know, in the personal fitness training industry for 20 years, mm-hmm. it wasn't until their partner left them or they couldn't run around with their kids anymore because they'd be out of breath or they'd go up to a flight of stairs and be like clutching the you know, clutching the wall, go, trying to get their breath in, or a doctor, a doctor with a scalpel will be over the top of their chest, opening them up, and then they go, "Oh, maybe this is the time I should change my diet." You know, like, <laughs> you know, mate, you know. So, or or summers come around, they're trying to get the clothes on again from last summer, and they're going, "Oh, that's not pretty," and they've got to get on their back and do that wiggle thing, you know, and, and <laughs> or or you know. For the majority, it was always, always a guy. You know, it was always a guy. Guys are huge. You know, that they did. Guys did really well for my business. So I'll tell you how. Because a guy is a, a, a partner, a husband, a boyfriend, sure. saying to his his girl, mm, babe, you know, you put on a bit, and all that, you know, <laughs> and then and then before you know it, we've got heaps of clients because the guys don't saying stupid, insensitive right. to their girlfriends or partners. Right. So it was those sort of things that it was those sort of things that are pain motivated. You know, that's when they were like, "Yep, enough is enough." That's the real. That's a reality check. Now, how do you have that outside of health and fitness? It could be a whole heap, but you know, are you unfulfilled? Are you like seriously stock take right now? Are you happy? Are you fulfilled? 
Have you got meaning and purpose in your life? And if you put that on a Likert scale of one to 10, one being, one being no, I haven't, and one being yes, I am fulfilled, right. where are you right now? Now, only you can check in with yourself there. And if there is a gap between where you are and that 10, then, then what I recommend you do is, is seek, seek other opinion. You know, like, like what the resources that you have at your, at, at, that you've used up until now has got you the results of what you've got up until now. So it's time to bring in some new resources right. and a new perspective, a new podcast subscription, a, a new YouTube channel yeah. subscription a new book, a new mentor, a new coach, a new program, right. do something, do something to help you close that gap. Seek those mentors, seek those resources where you align what you align with. And, uh, and, and then, but it won't be one big aha thing too. It won't be like, no. oh, read Trav's book and my whole life's going to change. I, I reckon it'll change quite a bit, but, um, but the point is be, uh, get used to a lifetime of learning. If you, if this really means a lot to you, get, get used to a lifetime of learning. It won't be one, uh, one big aha moment that will change your life. It'll be like in football or uh, you'd probably call it in ice hockey up there. Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's all the, it's all the one percenters that make the hundred percent of change in a game, right? That's right. That's right. You're eating, you creep and crawl your way up till you get to the goal. And that's really what it is. Yeah. So, so in, in, in your book, you, you've got a whole a blueprint, really, of, of a bucket list blueprint. And, and you sort of have it broken down into a variety of different areas. <clears throat> I, I wonder if you could sort of maybe go through some of them and get people an idea of what, the, you know, what that picture looks yeah. like. Yeah, it's right there. So it's, uh, there's the book, yep. uh, bucket, thebucketlistguy.com forward slash book. Um, you can get a signed copy. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I've been I've been banging this drum for ten years, right? Did the TED talk on it called "Life's Too Short" yeah, so by I'm... me, Trav Bell, and uh, and yeah, I've got a bit of different haircut in that. I've got a mohawk. That's right. That was my that was my Q forty haircut. Um, but I... at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, you had one prior to that, sure. Yeah. Um, no, the blueprint I created the blue the my bucket list blueprint, um, and again a bucket list is a filter as a lens to look at your life through and recalibrate, sure. recalibrate with. Um, but when I looked at this whole bucket list concept, a lot of it was about travel. A lot of it was about maybe some you know running the marathons and this sort of all this extreme kind of stuff. Um, and I wanted to create this blueprint to help people be happier now. You know they can identify small things that when crossed off gives you the momentum and motivation to smash through the bigger ones. Right. Right. So it's really, it's really helped people. And it also, it's, it's designed to help people go North, South, East, West in their own brain and help them to extract and articulate this personally meaningful and holistic list. Right. So the, my bucket list blueprint, M Y my bucket list is 12 letters, a 12 letter acronym. Yep. And we'll just rush through it really quick. But M stands for meet a personal hero. Y stands for your proud achievements. B, buy that special something. U, ultimate challenges. C, conquer a fear. K, kind acts for others. E, express yourself, the creative side of you. T, take lessons, some skills that you want to learn before your time is up. L, leave a legacy. I, idiotic stuff. S, satisfy curiosity. That's where it gets a bit weird. And T is travel adventures. So, 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 do you have a favorite one on that, or do you do you, do you have one trap that's the? Uh, Mate, like, I've got three hundred and fifty things to do, and I keep adding uh, adding things every single day because, right. or not every single day, but every single week, and you know, I, I, and just keep adding until you die. It gives you, it gives you a certain. I say a bucket list is a tangible life plan. Sure. Where our career plan or our business plan should fit into our life plan and not be the other way around. So this really brings home that work to live principle. Yes. Right. And, and, and that's basically what it does. It, it helps people create a tangible life plan. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, as far as our business, let's compartmentalize. So if we look at our businesses or our jobs, our careers, um, you know, even a share portfolio or a business portfolio or a property portfolio, mm -hmm. it's designed to do two things and two things only really is to spit out cash flow and spit out time flow. 
Okay. You know, yep. like for you to go and do the things that you want to do because, you know, the, the, the money and the time is not the end result. It's what you do with that money and time. And it gives you choices. The better that vehicle, the more optimized that vehicle, the more choices you got. Real simple. That's right. All right. But it's not about comparing ours against Jeff Bezos, you know, like ours against other people's. It's all relative. That's correct. Um, I think that's the double bonus. Point, though, that, that, the that's, relative that? Piece, that's a really important point. It is. Yeah. Relative. Because we live in a comparison the, world, right. man, and it does oh, our right. head in and, and well, we're, all you, comparing, well, sorry, we're all talk, comparing. We're all comparing our our behind the scenes footage with yes. someone else's highlights reel, and it's yeah. bull- you know, yeah. like, like we're so different. We've got so much different backgrounds and income yeah. levels and all that. Um, but mate, this is help. This is help. Uh, kids, sure, very wealthy people. Yeah, people have got a lot of money, a lot of time. Who thought they all had it together, and then before you know it, this has just opened up their whole their whole world and and helped them do charitable right. uh, things. It's it's helped people. God, it's it's amazing. Yeah, you know, I've been doing this for ten years, man, and it's it's really helped a lot of people at so many different levels. You know, get out of their own way and yes. experience it, uh, experience a whole new version of themselves. What I, what I love about it, as you, even as you're, you're going through the list, there's things that can be really small. Like, you know, a bucket list doesn't have to be these huge, gigantic achievements, right? They can be no. really small ones. But again, you're giving yourself credit for what you've done. And, and, and I think that's just, you know, it's important. Yeah, well, that's, that's, what we, yeah, that's what we call a reverse bucket list. So in there, I, I, um, there's three lists, right? There's the future bucket list, which is all the things we want to do in the future. There's a reverse bucket list which I encourage people to actually do first. There's a big gratitude exercise of what you've done in your life as if it were on a bucket list all the way along. Go go ahead and list all that. And it gives people a foundation of, I can do this. Mm. And uh, so we've got re- future bucket list, reverse bucket list, and we've also got another list that starts with F. F F-U-C-K-I-T list. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's that list, which I will not mention um, because this is a family show, yes. um, but it is outlined in the book yeah. <laughs> right, right, at, right at the end, uh, right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so I won't, I won't swear on your show, but if you're sure. watching this, I'm still not swearing. I'm just showing you a book. Sure not, no. um, but this is all the shit you, you, never, you don't want to do. Like I went... I went to uh, I went to Mount Everest with my dad, um, which is one of the, the big things to go to base camp. And we went through Tibet and went to advanced base camp, which is we you know, there's base camp and then you've got to walk up to advanced base camp. It's the highest place in the world that you can go that you can walk to on uh, you know without getting out the ice axes and put on those yep. crampons and all that sort of thing to climb Everest. Yep. And I, I, we were at 6,500 metres and um, I was just like, you do 10 breaths and you're just completely out of breath. Dad was fine at 68 years of age or whatever he was then. Awesome. I was, and I was parked around the toilet bowl every single morning. Like it was crazy altitude sickness. I got to there and I had my, I had Mount, you know, summit Mount Everest. I mean, the bucket of this guy has got a summit Mount Everest, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. No, he doesn't. No, not anymore. I, I got to Mount Everest. I was sick as a dog, altitude sickness. I looked up two kilometers above me and went, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out of there. So I took it off that list, off my future bucket list. I put on that other list that I just mentioned. Oh, that's good. I like the, the fact that you can interchange if need be, right? <laughs> you got to. I mean, it, it, but the thing is, it, it, um, it's amazing that when you, you know, this is what I encourage people to do. Obviously, you get a book, but, but remember, remember these things. Remember, remember this. Remember these things. Yeah, I remember them well. The, the pen. Yeah, yeah. It's called a pen, ladies and gentlemen. It's called a pen. It, it does this thing called, and remember this. It's called paper. We ah. used to do this thing called writing. Yes, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, crazy analog. I know. <laughs> being facetious but those crazy times we grew up in <laughs> oh those crazy times exactly but if you actually put pen to paper you've got a 42 percent more likelihood of actually manifesting of your goals you know people don't even write their goals down mate and if, and if you actually encourage people to write down their goals it's like you discovered freaking fire mm-hmm. like and, and you know 
Oh my God. So write down your goals, let alone your bucket list items and has an amazing, you're nearly halfway there, there, 42% more likelihood of them actually, you know, coming to fruition. So you might as well just write some stuff down. So I encourage people to obviously get a book. It's it's designed like a workbook. So you can, you know, really get into it with your, with your pen and, um, and get this stuff out of your head. Separate your daily to-do list from your bucket list. Write down the small ones. Write down the big ones. But when you cross off the start to cross off the small ones, or as we say, tick it before you kick it, uh, cross off the small ones. Um, that'll give you the momentum and motivation to smash through the bigger ones. It's about choosing happiness. You know, living, living with um, intentionally living. Gotcha. You know, intentionally choosing the things that you want, the kinds of experiences that you want in your life. Right. And this is, you know, um, for starters, this will be an opportunity for you to put your own oxygen mask on first before you can help others. That's right. But I'm encouraging you to do one. I'm encouraging you and your partner to do one um, and also you and your family to do one. And in businesses, we, we do ones with businesses as well. So, um yeah it's been it's amazing what gets woken up inside of people during the process i i i love the fact that you you made the distinction between the daily to-do list and the bucket list because uh i don't know if necessarily people are thinking about it that way uh, or you're making the distinction that there is two different lists and 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 you can get so caught up in what you've got to do that it takes precedent over everything else yeah well we've got um We've got two types of goals and they are um, uh, two types of goals and they are uh, achievement goals and, and habit goals. So achievement goals are things like bucket list items there where there's a success marker and you can, and you can go, yep, I achieved that. I did that marathon. I climbed that mountain. I jumped off that, <laughs> jumped out of that plane, whatever it might be. I ran that 5k run, whatever that might be. That's an achievement goal. But you might have all these little habit goals on route to which you know to um, uh, on route to an achievement goal. You know, and a, a habit goal. You know, drinking four liters of water a day is a habit goal. Sure. Reading two chapters of a book every single day is a habit goal. Right. Um, but my ultimate, one of the ultimate challenges that I'm doing for myself at the moment is reading 52 books in a year. All right, so that's that's what I'm doing at the moment. So that's my achievement goal, and uh, you know that's the bucket list item right there. That's the, but the habit is uh, the daily discipline in order to make that happen. Um, but this is about life. This is not you know I'm not doing that for work. This is about life goals, not work goals. So you know, and we spend a lot of our time on the work to do list rather than or our business to do list not on our bucket list. So again, um, this really brings home that work to live principle. Gotcha. I think there needs to be some clear definitions there too. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we, we talked about to-do lists. I'm wondering, Trav, if you can, uh, no, I, I, there's probably a whole bunch of them, but I wonder sort of other sort of common things that are holding people back from attacking their bucket list. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure the whole bunch of them, what are some common ones that you, you come across? Oh, uh, look, um, yeah, I, 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 I can spot a victim pretty easy. You know, like I did 20 years with, with thousands and tens of thousands of personal training clients around Australia here for years and years and years. I can spot when people are a victim, you know, to their own circumstances and their own situations. You know, they blame everyone else but themselves. Uh, they use excuses uh, for everything and they deny there's even a problem. You know, oh, I'm not fat. I'm just, you know, I've got a bad fluid retention. Fluid retention is my thyroid. No, dude, you're fat. It's probably why I got out of personal training. It's a little bit too blunt. Too blunt. Um, <laughs> it's like, dude, dude, you're single because you're, you're single because you're weird. All right, you're, you're poor. You no, dude, you're poor. All right, don't don't even deny you've got. You know, oh, there's no good men out there. No, you're you're a little creepy. No one likes to hear the honest truth, do they? Uh, it's tough to hear sometimes for some people, Trav. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. But so people use, you know, excuses. In, in our list, for me, you know, it's it's always haven't got enough money. 
Right. Uh, the kids, I've got the mortgage. I've got, yeah, I've got all that too. All right. Um, but there's too many examples of where people have bucked the, bucked the trend, right? Um, and what I say to that, it's never a matter of resources. It's a matter of resourcefulness. When the why is strong enough, the how will work itself out, right? Right. So if you want something bad, like if it, if I said to you, okay, or the, what, what's something on your bucket list that you really want to do above everything else, what would that be? Give us an example. No, Trav, for a long time, I've been thinking about skydiving and what the, you know, jumping out of a plane. I'm telling you, it's, it's something back All there. Right. So, so, and I'll tell you something. Why it, haven't you done it? Um, I almost did it last year. There's a little, there's a, a little bit of fear, a little bit of uncertainty, yeah. but it's, it's, it's there. I almost, I almost did it last year. Close. All right. All right. So, yeah. But it's still so what's stopping you from, I know we've got coronavirus and lockdowns and there's no, literally no planes in the air, right. but, <laughs> but um, that's why I almost did stopping, it. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's stopping, what's stopping people from doing that now? Actually, it's just, I hate to say it's old, you know, like, like in my experience, it's old school, like, just go do it, you know, just do it kind of, kind of, you know, what's, what is the, the minutest first step in order to make that actually happen? What's the first thing you'd have to do? You'd have to go out and find a plane, find find a plane to jump out of. (laughs) Cool. You ring them. Yeah. That's what you do. All right, so if I gave you five minutes right now to go and ring them, can you do that? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And can you book yourself in? Yep. Cool. Sure. Can you pay to can you pay for it? Yep. Cool. Well, it's kind of like that's that's what we do, you know, like that's that's it, whatever what we do in our programs. That's what I do in some of my programs right. is we actually get people to do it. Because right. people create this big story around it and it's like this thing off in the future. It's like when it comes down to it, you know, it's about just, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a great example. I'll give you a great example of how this works, right? Yep. So I had uh, this airline pilot, he's a Qantas airline captain okay. um, in one of my, he's got all the resources and, you know, he's, he's wealthy he, he, Um and uh, Qantas airline pilot, and um, he was, uh, you know, quite a nerd. Let's be honest, and quite shy and retired. And and I have this, I have this segment in my um, in in my past events called the bucket list experience, where I get them to go out and get people to go out. They've written their bucket list, they've they've written it, which is number one step. And then two, I get them to go out and act- and and action their bucket lists, like action it. Like no more Google searching, no more. Oh, where is the best skydiving place to do that? All right, right. done. All right, just pick one. All right. And then I had uh, his name is Stephen. I have everyone go out and come back in, and they've all got. And he comes back in after ten minutes. So, you know, it's about creating a bit of a pressure cooker, old school boot boot camp style. Maybe yep. that's the personal trainer in me, but but people need to be put in a virtual headlock in order to right. in order to go out and do stuff right sure. Sure. And that's where i think a lot of coaching falls down people are so like oh let's go out and discover no nah, nah, bitch go do it right. you know <laughs> so right. um and, and what what other excuses have you got so the point is Stephen come back and and he was white okay dude dude you don't look well. He goes, Trav, what did you make me do? I go, Stephen, what in front of everyone? But mind you, he's come back in right last and we've got another 50 people now. Now all crowding around. Steve, what did you do? What did you make me do? Stephen, what what's happened? And he's just shaking his head. Tell us, tell us, mate. What did you do? I can't believe it. I can't believe I just did that. I don't know why. It was in the back of my mind too. Uh, uh, I've just, I've just booked myself into a stand up, stand up comedy open mic night, and we all just went, oh, like, and collectively I could hear everyone's unconscious saying, "But you're not funny," you know. <laughs> he was like an engineering type of guy, and uh, that's the reason and, why he was all white and pale, right? <laughs> oh, not looking well. And he goes, oh. "No, no, no, guys, it, it got worse." 
but how could that get worse? He goes, no, it got worse because then I went on Facebook and I told everyone where it was going to be and when. And we all went, oh, <laughs> you know, my, my bum just went funny. And uh, I said, oh, anyway, long story short, it was exactly what he needed because he went in and did it. He, a, a, a friend of his uh, filmed him. He was funny. Uh, he did it again. He was funny. Um, and, uh, the, the coolest thing about it, it was, it, that was the, the tipping point in his life yeah. where he actually got the courage because of that. And he wrote me this huge testimonial was awesome. Um, he had the courage to get out of a toxic relationship, ask a girl out that he'd just been dreaming to, to ask out and he, and she said, yes. Um, I believe they're still dating. I don't know what's going on there, but he had the courage then his older brother had been saying, you know, like, let's, let's get into this property for a real estate business and, and do some property development. He was always like, no, oh, no, nah, nah. But he, like that night after, after booking himself in, he said yes to his brother, let's do it. They developed a property, you know, property company. Um, and, he, and it was a huge ripple effect into every other area of the life. So the point what I'm trying to make is it's not about the skydive, man. It's about what exists on the other side. And that's the person we don't know yet. And that's what I want people. I mean, we've got fear. We've got resources. We've got all these things that have got to come into play. But at the end of the day, what the most important thing we should be concentrating on is the bigger version of ourselves and get excited and get really curious about that person that exists on the other side, the person that we do not know yet, the bigger version that's of you saying, Hurry the hell up, get this done because I've got some other treasures for you on the other side. I love it. I love it. Uh, Trav, you bang on. And uh, I, you know, I certainly love the, the, the point about you know, that person on the other side who we don't know yet, right? So, yeah, I mean, you know, really the, sky, the skydive, you know, and I'm saying this metaphorically, but the skydive might lead to the next book. The sky right. might, yeah. skydive might lead to you asking a, a, a guest you know, who's right up the ranks. It might be, you know, relationship. It might be help help you handle uh, an awkward relationship situation or a, or a hard conversation that has to have, you know, has to happen within the business or at work. It's that sort of ripple effect, that emotional threshold that you come to. Yeah. Um, sure. You no, know, you really see it when you're coming out of a plane. It's like, why the did I do this? But it, but isn't that a metaphor for the for a lot of other things that we've got to handle in life? Sure, sure, sure. That's what we, that's what we've got to get excited about, you know. That's what we've got to get curious about. But and people, you know, people, uh, people don't give themselves that that uh, enough credit and don't trust themselves enough and don't trust the other side of the process. Got you, got you, got you, Trav. I love it. Listen, uh, I, I, I've so much appreciated uh, this conversation. I want to ask you one last thing before we go. And I think it's only fitting after all, uh, you know, this is the, the Audacious Living Podcast. So it's only fitting if I were to ask you, you know, what was the most audacious thing that, that you've ever done? Hey, well, apart from getting on this show, um, <laughs> the, um, the audacious thing that I've ever done Um well, for me, you know, like, yes, writing the book um, was a big one. But I reckon, you know, going back to that first seminar that I ever did, you know, um, and then now I've done a TED Talk. And as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm like this all the time, you know, and, and me doing 18 minutes. If you watch my TED Talk, it's like 18 and a half minutes of, of terror uh, because I've got 2,000 people in front of me. Yeah. I'm, I'm standing on a red bot, on a three by three red dot. You know, with four cameras on me, and I, I normally run around like an idiot on stage. Sure. Uh, but but apart from that, it was probably my first ever seminar because I I for me, public speaking was the big dominant. Was my Steve mm. Steve's comedy routine? It was maybe your skydiving. Um, it for me, it was the big domino that I had to push over in my life that affected a lot of other things and gave me the confidence. Um, you know, my, my, my partner here, Tracy, we went to high school together. She was the hottest chick in high school. And here we are together, you know, like I, this, this is, this confidence has been, has built over and over and over the years. 
but it was public speaking for me. That first one where, oh my God, what are they going to think of me? You know, all that, all that stuff comes up and, uh, you know, it says, and Jeff has, says you've got to feel the fear and do it anyway, because it's crazy what happens on the other side of it. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. I love it. Listen, Trav, tell, tell the viewers and listeners again, where they can uh, connect with you and specifically pick up a copy of your book. Yeah, man, I, the bucket list guy, thatbucketlistguy.com is my website. And if they put bucketlistguy.com forward slash book, um, they can grab a signed copy, which most most people have, uh, have opted for. And we've gone to Amazon bestseller, which is even yeah. more cool. Um, but it's really helped people, man. And, 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 and the thing is, at the end, it's written by like a workbook. And at the end, there's a link that you can send send me your bucket list when completed. Oh. And I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt for 365 really random bucket lists using the blueprint for the next book. Amazing. So if you want to be in it, man, let's uh, and and a shout out and all that sort of thing. Get you know, get it, get it done, man, and we'll uh, we'll um, we'll get you in the next book. But yeah, people can find me on the socials: uh, Instagram, bucketlistguy.travbell, Facebook, and LinkedIn, Travbell the Bucket List Guy. Got you, got you. Well, you, you certainly have given uh, our viewers and listeners a whole lot to think about uh, in terms of getting those lists done. But you don't want them to think; you actually want them to do it. So let's uh, let's just stop it thinking. Let's go and get it done. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. I mean, life's way too short not to live your bucket list, and you know it's your life. Take responsibility for it. There's, you know, and do it on behalf of your kids. This is a leadership lesson. You know, be the example. Be the true, true example of a glass half full kind of person you know, uh, uh, or what I call a bucket lister, because it'll have, you know, uh, to be that example, that's what that's what the world, honestly, in my heart of hearts, that's what the world needs right now. We need you to stand up, be a bucket lister, be that light for people, because the world is in a mental health crisis right now, and we we, 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 we need more examples. So, so take responsibility and be one. Awesome, awesome. Travis, listen, I appreciate this. Thank you for the time, and be well, my friend. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me on. Back we are here on the podcast and big shout out and thanks goes out to Trav uh, for spending some time with us and also thank you for opening up our understanding of bucketology. Um, I think if there's any one thing I could take away from my conversation with Trav, uh, it would be this. Recognize the power of now and take action. It's so simple, but the impact is immeasurable. Once you're able to stop procrastinating and putting things off, we can find that spark to get us going and start pursuing our dreams, the things that we love, and the things that bring us joy. The simple act of starting has the potential to provide us with so much happiness and purpose in our lives, but we got to take action, and it starts right now. Hey, listen, if you haven't registered for email notifications of the podcast, I would certainly encourage that you do so by heading over to bestaudaciouslife.com, enter in your email address, and you'll be immediately notified anytime there's new content uh, that comes out. Uh, As always, a big shout out to our our listeners. Thank you uh, for your ongoing support. It's tremendous and appreciative. And again, I I, I take a point, I make a point of saying this every every episode, but it is value. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you being here on this episode of the podcast. We've reached the end. However, before we go, I want to encourage you to stay safe, be kind, show love to one another, and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.